Welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about the premier accounting firm, how to have it, and really getting into the nuts and bolts. I'm going to be speaking with Roger Connect. This is Lauren, and I am Lauren Fogelman with Business Success Solution. So you are in the right place if you're looking for the three core services, which elevate your role and positions you as that strategic accountant. Also, you want to discover the proven process that top accounting firms use to achieve remarkable growth and success, and also gain actionable insights you can implement immediately to start building your premier accounting firm today. I definitely suggest you have pen and paper ready because Roger and I have connected before. He's always very generous, and he will let you know as well how you can follow up with him as we wrap up. A little bit about Roger. He is president of Universal Accounting Center, and it provides accounting professionals with the training, certifications, coaching, support, pretty much everything under one place that they need to become profit and growth experts for their clients. He hosts Building the Premier Accounting Firm. It's a great show. I've already been on it. It's a podcast that keeps accounting professionals on the cutting edge of the industry by offering quality bookkeeping, accounting, and tax services. Roger is the author of Your Strategic Accountant and Your Profit and Growth Expert. Each year written to help business owners understand what they can expect from their accounting profession. And if you want to find out more about Roger, he, first of all, is very active on LinkedIn. Um, lots of content there that he shares. But also, you can go to his website, which is universalaccounting.com, and we'll have that in the notes as well. So, Roger... I can't wait to dig into this conversation today. Lauren, this is going to be a lot of fun. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. So right off the bat, why don't you just tell me how you got to do what you're doing? <laughs> well, there's the, 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 the short long version. story of the short story. Okay. Short story is the president of the company actually retired a number of years ago. And as he was considering within the organization or externally, whether or not he was going to bring someone in, he pegged me. And so I was given the opportunity to progress from vice president to president. And for the last 10 or so years, I've had the privilege of operating and running Universal Accounting Center. It's been a wonderful journey. Uh, the company has changed quite a bit. The industry has changed quite a bit. The founding of the company was back in 1979 when it was more traditional in the sense that we had classroom settings, the traditional classroom environment with an instructor. Today, everything is online. It's basically independent study. However, everyone is assigned actually a tutor, an academic advisor to help along the way for all of the trainings that we provide. So uh, it's kind of a unique experience as we try to service the accounting community. And as that, um, as you're talking about that part, I was, I was thinking about is that you really are a champion of elegant, elevating the profession mm -hmm. and I want to acknowledge that. So when you're working with business owners, how do you help them maybe apply the universal business model, which is spoken about in the book, In the Black? Great question. You know, one of the things that we have found is that business owners, they get very excited about what it is they do as they basically take their product or service to the market. But one of the things that we believe is as accounting professionals is there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that are essential for the business to be successful, cash flow being one of those. And so there's what's referred to as the universal business model. And as you correctly pointed out, the book In the Black helps educate business owners as to what are those three key areas of business they need to pay attention to in order to ensure their success. The first being marketing and sales. They've got to be growing. If you're not getting a client, if you're not selling your services, you're going to die. Accounting services, the value of the numbers, knowing the numbers and understanding the value of the accounting professional, and what they bring to the equation. It's not that accounting is this necessary evil that you just kind of appease as you're in business. It's literally there as the language of business to help us understand what the company needs and what it wants as it's trying to grow. And then last is P, production. It's where we're actually looking at what can we do to work more efficiently and profitably. So when you look at a business owner and you help them understand of all the things they're working on, they're going to fall in one of those three buckets, the marketing and sales, growing the business, the numbers, tracking those key indicators that determine the success of the company, and then the production side, fulfilling the orders that they're making. That helps liberate the business owner. It helps take all this stuff that's in their head and organize it in such a way as to help them realize what it is they need to prioritize. And the beauty of this, and it's pointed out in the book, In the Black, is the value of the accounting profession in helping them be successful. 
I, I think that the accounting professional, um, so many of them are unsung heroes. Their clients don't really fully understand what they bring to the table, how they make a difference. And they literally can take someone who is running their business without understanding the numbers at all and make them go from maybe barely breaking even financial crisis into financial health. So I believe that talking about the accounting services and being able to explain the numbers to your clients is something that can make or break a business. And it's it's so often overlooked because people get uncomfortable with it. It's intimidating to them. It is. It is. And it's actually addressed in two books. One is called Red to Black. As you were pointing out, it's taking that business owner from that stress of being in the red and mm -hmm. transitioning them to being in the black. So the book Red to Black is a how-to guide for accounting professionals to literally help our clients address cash flow situations and move them into the profitability of being in the black. But the bigger thing that I want to point out to you is you were right. The business owners that I've spoken to now for more than 20 years, two decades, have clearly indicated that they just don't understand as business owners what is it that the accounting profession affords them to be successful. And because they don't know what to ask or expect of the accounting profession, they struggle to leverage what we can provide for them to be mm -hmm. successful. So let me give you an example. You take bookkeeping. Wonderful. It's compliant. It's obviously helping the business owner. But if they're not aware of what the financial reports are and how they're able to use them to make more informed business decisions, they're going to take the bookkeeping, assume it's just a necessary evil for being in business, not appreciate it, take the numbers, file them, and never refer to them. What we need to do as an accounting profession is a much better job of helping them realize that there's a wealth of information in that, that uh, report, those reports, to be successful. That financial statement, that uh, balance sheet, that that uh, cash flow statement, those things are essential for the business owner if they know how to use them. And so that's where the accounting comes in. It's basically helping as accounting professionals, the business owner to hear what the business is saying as it speaks to them through the language of accounting. It's where we're now working as what I refer to as translators or interpreters to help them understand what's happening with the business. It's no different than a doctor doing periodic tests on the on the, uh, cl the uh, client, the uh, patient, and figuring out what is that's uh, needed in the business. And that's what we're supposed to be doing as a accounting professionals. And unfortunately, I, I feel too often as a profession, we're failing our customers. And, and, and I agree with the fact that um, they're not being proactive enough when it comes to accounting and teaching the clients how to understand the numbers better. But I believe that, that because there's so much talk about the move to advisory services now, mm -hmm. it's happening more and more. And it, we're starting to catch up and people are getting on board with it. You know, I, I I agree with you. The profession has been using that buzzword now for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I do feel that there's people in the accounting profession that see the need for us to move that direction. But I'm going to be honest with you. For all the years that I've been hearing it, I have not seen many address how. What what we're failing as an industry is to understand how. And so Universal Accounting Center, a number of years ago, we identified what is it to basically move into the CFO and advisory space? What is the client needing? What are they expecting? What are they willing to pay for? And so what we've tried to do is actually create a program to literally educate the accounting professional as to what their voice is so that they can do an engagement, get paid very well for their time and services, their experience and education, but deliver a, a nice engagement for the client so that they can see how the business is improving because of that influence that the accountant is bringing to the table. So you're right. Advisory, it's a sexy phrase. It's this mm -hmm. nice kind of wide defined term. You know, what does that look like? How do I charge for it? How much do I charge for it? But it is defined. There is something to be said for it. And I think over the years, we've done a great job at Universal identifying what that looks like. And, and I agree. I want to get back to those three key areas with the mapping, um, the yeah. marketing, accounting services, and the production part of it. So a lot of times marketing and sales are clumped together, but I see that they are complementary, not the same. How do you look at the difference between marketing and sales? Love the question. First of all, it's it's one that most accounting professionals struggle to define or understand, so I'm glad we're discussing it. The first is marketing. Marketing is everything that you're doing as an organization, as a business, to identify your potential customers. Once your customer is identified, they've raised their hands, they've filled out a form, they've provided to you their name, their contact information. Once somebody has said, oh, that's interesting, I think I need to understand more what it is you do. If that has happened, anything that you've done with the marketing that 
that then allows you to capture that contact information, then puts, puts the person then from marketing into the sales. Sales is now the nurturing effort that you put into that contact to educate them and position you as the expert to the point that they want to meet with you. So marketing is clearly that first step of finding the potential customers, going into the places where they reside, where they associate, where they mingle, where they network finding them. And once you can get that introduction, that referral, them to request, maybe something that you've put out as a lead magnet, all of a sudden, once that contact information comes in, the heavy lifting starts of how do you now educate them to what you do and why it's important? How do you position yourself as the expert to where they want to meet with you? That one-on-one -on -one meeting is the goal. That is where it now is going to transition, hopefully, from being a sales process to asking for the engagement and now moving them into the client space. Okay, I have a lot to say about marketing and sales, but one of the things that comes up is that if you're not aware of how it actually works that much, it's well worth um, finding out more. And I know that we both have talked about it because your marketing, if it's done poorly, can be a disservice. It can attract the wrong clients to mm -hmm. you. That's or right. it could just fail. And then you're thinking that, oh, marketing works for everybody else but me. So <laughs> there's... Right. Uh, so, so there's some things to really think about because nobody wants to be a best kept secret and, and you want to be able to really educate people before they start reaching out to you. So you're grabbing the attention of the right people. Well, what have you found, Roger? Well, there's a few things that I'll add to this. First of all, in the book, In the Black, we speak of nothing happening until you make a sale. We have to recognize as a professional, uh, it doesn't matter how good you are, how great you are as an accounting tax professional, unless you've got paying customers, it just doesn't matter. So marketing has to be something you're great at. But oftentimes when I'm meeting with accounting professionals, they're either really good at the marketing or they're really good at the sales. Oftentimes it's not both. And so sometimes with sales, I can speak to someone that, that says, yeah, once I get a contact or referral, I can get them as a client. And, you know, I'm batting nearly 100% and I'm very happy, but I just can't find the people to sell. The flip is also the case. I'm really great at marketing. I meet all these business owners. I'm doing a phenomenal job of finding these potential customers. I just don't know how to nurture them and move them towards mm -hmm. seeing my services of value to where they're willing to pay for my what I did, what it is I offer. So we've got to first identify where's your strength and where's your weakness. So it's marketing or sales. But I'm going to agree with you regarding marketing. Sometimes we're just fishing in the wrong ponds. Sometimes we're using the wrong bait. And so what we need to do is figure out, first of all, where is the fish that I want? And if I can maybe through niching, identify my target item, uh, audience, my ideal client, if I can define who it is, it's a lot easier than to now bait for that. And all of a sudden, once I know exactly who it is I'm trying to capture as a client, I'm more able to purposely create my marketing so that it actually draws in the right client base. So that's what I'm trying to uh, really emphasize with a lot of the clients I work with is first and foremost, begin with the end in mind. Who's your ideal client? Mm -hmm. Who do you really want? This can be industry. It could be business size. It could be business owner types. There's a variety of things that you can specialize in. We just need to be a little bit more clear in our messaging so that it can resonate with the right people. And, and that's what I found for myself also. I mean, once I really honed in on the accounting profession and recognized that it was a good fit for me, it actually made it easier being in a niche as opposed to a generalist trying to mm -hmm. appeal to everybody and everyone. It allowed me to know where to focus my attention, my time, my energies. And that's when things really took off. And I've seen that with firm owners as well. And as a result of that, you get more specific and then you're not getting all the people that you think are price sensitive and that you think everybody just wants the lowest rates with um, as much service as possible. So let's kind of discuss the pricing part. Mm -hmm. What do you see as a challenge for people getting paid what the value of their services are actually worth? Oh, it's a great question. First of all, I think it begins with what are you worth? What are you mm -hmm. expecting? And I think it's really two questions. What do you need and what do you want? Uh, the need, you need to be clear as to what it is that you're needing in order to meet your your lifestyle, what you're accustomed to. And if you know what that number is, you can reverse engineer it to determine how many clients you need. The want is where you're taking your business. What kind of trajectory are you looking for? Is it going to be a solopreneur operation, something that's going to be a firm where you're working with uh, accountants and staff? to actually achieve that financial goal. So I think that's first and foremost. But, but when it comes to pricing, I think you need to understand that there are five pricing models that I'm familiar with that I oftentimes see. And you need to pick, in my opinion, at least only two. 
only two. And the first one that we're all familiar with is hourly. Hourly does have its place. I know it gets a lot of negative negativism, but it does exist for a reason. So first of all, you've got hourly and uh, there's a lot to be said about that. We can dive into it a little bit. The second is flat rate. I think it's very appropriate for you to figure out what are my fees for specific services. And you can just come up, come up with a dollar amount. It's a flat fee. And uh, that's very easy then to explain and justify. And I think that's an important part of pricing. Can you explain why? the cost is what it is. And I think when a, a potential customer is asking why to just kind of say, mm, because that's not enough. You got to be able to explain it somehow mm -hmm. that makes sense. The third happens to be what's referred to as menu pricing. It's generally the one that you're familiar with where it has three different options. The idea being that you're trying to position most of the individuals to select the middle offer. The fourth happens to be what's called revenue pricing. Revenue is something that's very common as you're working with firms. They try to just say when the client has a revenue base of say a million to 3 million, we charge this much for our services, three to 5 million, this much for our services. It makes it easy to actually give us a statement. And then the last is value pricing. It's one that we've heard about for years. A lot of people struggle with implementing it, but it does exist and it can be done and it can be very lucrative, but value pricing is the last one. So when you consider those five pricing strategies, I always work with my clients to suggest pick two of them. Generally, it's hourly and one of the other. And with those, they're able to then come up with their pricing models, their dollar amounts that they're going to be using, and more confidently now quote their prices. And with these five models, I see them actually more like an evolution. Most people started as hourly because that's how we typically got paid when we joined the workforce. Mm -hmm. And then some people will go over to flat rate because they hate tracking hours. Yep. Uh, I think that the menu pricing would be the next part of the tier. Uh, definitely revenue pricing. You need to be able to focus more on the value and get better at that sales part, which you were talking about. And as you said, the value pricing is definitely the top and the most challenging one to do and implement. Has that been um, your experience as well? It has. Your, your term to say that it is an evolutionary experience is correct. Most people do evolve through those pricing uh, platforms. Uh, I don't want to suggest that you have to go through the mm -hmm. evolution of it. You don't have to start at hourly and over time move up. You can insert yourself into flat rate menu pricing or revenue based and begin there. But you're right. Most people actually find as they're growing their business and building their company that they kind of evolve from one to the next to the next. That is true. And I know with your book, you're a strategic accountant, you speak of three core services. Um, can you explain why they're important from the business side owner as well as from the accounting side? Oh, happy to. And I appreciate the question because the book actually stems from the fact that for a number of years, I was speaking to business owners and as well accounting professionals. And I found that the two did not communicate nor agree. And here's my point. When I would speak with business owners and I asked what they were paying for, what they were expecting, what they understood bookkeeping, accounting, tax to be, they had their own definitions. And when I listened to the accounting profession and explained, okay, what is a bookkeeper? What is a tax preparer? What is an account? The two definitions did not meet. And so there was clearly a disconnect between what the business owners understood and what the accounting profession was trying to communicate. So I wrote the book with the intent of trying to help those two now mesh and understand one another. It's it's written to the business owner, and it's intended to help them understand what is it for them when they pay for bookkeeping services, accounting services. So when you're asking what are the three core, I'll just quickly answer that. It's basically every business needs three things from the accounting profession, and it can be from one firm, one individual, multiple people, multiple firms, but ultimately they as a business need these three core things, bookkeeping and accounting, tax planning and preparation, CFO and advisory services. Those are three distinct services that come from the accounting profession that they need in order to be, in my opinion, very successful. And too often what we're doing as a profession is we're leaving them short. We're offering them bookkeeping and tax preparation, but we're not providing accounting and tax ad, uh, advisory or tax planning services. We're not meeting small businesses typically with the CFO needs that they have as they're trying to grow their businesses. These are untapped needs needs that the business owner doesn't realize they clearly need, so they can't articulate or understand why they would pay for them. And too often they think they're paying for all of them and the accountant isn't clear as to which they're not receiving because they didn't pay enough for them. So what the book does is really articulate well what the business owner can expect and for the accounting professional, a better understanding of how to explain these services in a way that the business owner would appreciate and be willing to pay for. 
And with the CFO level services, do you feel like there's a certain place where business is at where they ought to start considering it as opposed to as soon as they're starting up their business? That's a great question. Well, first of all, it's never too late. I think it's mm -hmm. always it's always something that is uh, put off too long. And why I say why I say that is because, in my opinion, one of the biggest values that the CFO position provides is a cash flow understanding of the business model. Too often, business owners start and within the first three to five years fail and go out of business, not because they didn't have a good product or service, but they failed to have the cash flow needed to sustain the business. And it's it's uh, not uncommon to have somebody that is from an accrual point of view profitable, but from a cash point of view failing and going bankrupt. And so mm -hmm. where the CFO comes in and it's different from a bookkeeper or an accountant is the CFO is able to work with the business owner to understand is the business model a profitable model? Is the customer paying enough up front upon selling that they're actually going to cover the cost of goods needed, the payroll essentially to provide that product that they're paying for so that at the end, the company can deliver it. And too often what we have with smaller businesses, especially, and it happens even with larger ones for that matter, is there's kind of a, you take from Peter to pay Paul kind of scenario. It's kind of like a pyramid scheme. This customer mm -hmm. is paying to afford me to deliver the product to this customer. And then eventually this customer will pay. Well, that's great that they paid, but they didn't pay for their product. What they did is they afforded me the ability to buy the product for this other customer that I need, need to do the work for. And it's this, it's this moving of the shells that's just crazy. And what we need to do as CFO advisors is come in and actually help the business owner understand what does it take for an individual transaction to be profitable and how do we make it so that the cash is essentially there from the beginning so we're not acting as a bank and basically using lines of credit and so forth to fund the success of that product or service being delivered. So the CFO role is a very critical one, I believe, from the very beginning to ensure the success of the company. I, I appreciate you expanding on that. And, you know, part of what I'm hearing is you talk to a lot of firm owners on a regular basis, Roger. So what have you noticed that maybe makes a difference between the average firm and those who really are able to be very successful and have the firm in their dreams. Wow. I would say there's a number of characteristics and traits that I can attribute to success, but I'm going to answer with three things. Okay. First is confidence. The accounting professional that sees their clients as peers that can confidently look in their eyes and say, I can take care of your accounting needs. They are successful because they basically exude this, uh, this air of, of success and confidence. The second is competence. So often I find people are really good at saying, I can take care of you, but they go back to their offices and they're not efficient in the work that they're doing. And therefore it's costly and they're not profitable. So you've got to be very competent at the work that you're doing so that you can take care of your, your customers in a profitable way. But the third thing, and this is, I think, where we're missing it, is if you look at it this as a job where you're just taking care of the, the bookkeeping, the accounting, you're just going through the motions of getting the numbers done, providing the reports, and you're not engaging with your clients to help them now answer this one important question. Therefore, what? If I'm going into my clients and I'm providing the bookkeeping, accounting, and tax preparation, if I can now say, based on the information I have and what I'm looking at, this is what you ought to consider next. That therefore, what is really important for the business owner to say, okay, I've paid for all these services. Therefore, what? What do I get from this? How is my business tomorrow going to be any different than, than it is today because of you? And as an accounting professional, if we're coming in and doing our jobs correctly, that business owner should have an aha, an epiphany, a clarification, something that allows them to more confidently run their business because of the insights we provided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Confidence is great because people want to be the confidence to deliver on your product and your promise of what it is you say that you're going to do. But the one that I believe is really where the value is, is being able to understand the what's possible and looking at that future focus of if we can achieve these things, then this is what we ought to be able to do next or where you ought to be heading. So I, I believe that all three of those are great, but that future focus one is really um, the golden nugget. Yeah, it is. And I think that's where we have an opportunity as a profession to really shine. Uh, okay, so you've been doing this for about two decades now, give or take. Uh, is there maybe a process you follow that helps determine or could even accelerate a firm owner's success? 
Yeah, there is a process. Uh, I refer to it as a turnkey process. Mm -hmm. There's a number of steps that you can actually follow with a client. And when I work with my business owner customers, uh, that's what I do is I help them. And it's really broken down into five things. So we can dive into each of these, but with time, we'll see what happens. The first is engage and manifest. They've got to rise to the level of being a leader. They have to understand that people are looking to them, whether it's employees or their clients, and they need to basically be that, that person that brings passion and energy to what's going on. And so that's exciting. Engage and manifest. The second happens to be understanding accounting. For the accounting professional, we understand our numbers, but how good are we at communicating to our clients what those numbers mean and helping them understand their own businesses? The third is increasing revenue. We've got to, as especially as accounting professionals, be what I refer to as a counterpreneurs. We've got to have that entrepreneurial mindset to focus on the top line revenue and grow our businesses. This is something that I think we probably don't feel as strong or competent in, which brings us to that conversation we had earlier about marketing and sales, but it's essential to the success of the business. The fourth is improving profit. We need to be looking at ways to work more efficiently and profitably in our organizations. We work hard, we should be profitable and financially successful because of it. And the fifth is building value. It's realizing that at the end of the day, what we're building isn't a client list. We're building a company, it's an asset and it has value. And if we know what things either detract or add to the valuation of the business, we can actually build an organization that we can be proud of that hopefully is autonomous from us. But the beauty of it is, is it becomes that goose that lays the golden egg. All of a sudden, we've got this company that we're very proud of. And hopefully at the end of the day is an asset that we can ultimately sell and retire from. And part of what I'm hearing with this turnkey process is that, okay, there's engage and manifest where you want to step up as the leader understanding accounting so that you're taking your clients maybe from financial shame to being financially savvy, uh, increasing their revenue, improving their profit and building value. And I believe that anybody that follows this with their clients, they're going to be naturally moving in the direction of advisory and CFO services anyway. It is a natural way to start going that there, but the only way to be able to actually do it is to get yourself out of the day-to-day -day operations and delegate those things, or maybe there's some things you ought to let go because it's, they're not a great fit for your firm. And by doing that, it allows you to strategically focus on the higher level services. Um, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I would add that for the listeners, there's something here that we need to understand. It's to our advantage to leverage technology. There's a lot of tools out there that we should be utilizing that can simplify or accelerate these processes. That frees up the time for us to either be with our family and friends and uh, hopefully enjoy life a little bit better or at the same time grow our businesses because we have the bandwidth to take on more and service our clients better. But then at the same time, as you were pointing out, it may afford us the ability to move more into the advisory space and engage at a deeper level with our clientele. The other thing is we need to be willing to delegate. There's a lot that needs to be said about our ability to document, duplicate, have somebody else do it, and delegate. Have somebody else do it following a process that we've established that is turnkey. It's a system. If we just follow it, these standard operating procedures ensure certain results. And so if we can define what those are in our organization, we can then expect certain expect uh, certain results from our uh, employees as it relates to our clients. And so that's how you grow a business. And even though you're a business owner, you 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 sometimes want to take care of yourself and not have to always be working. So I believe that it's important to have a business that supports your lifestyle instead of one that drains the life out of you. You speak a lot about passion and personal time as well. Um, tell me from your point of view, why you think that they are so important. Well, passion, I think, is important because it's contagious. That's what your customers are drawn to is the energy that you have for the work you do. I think it's what your employees are drawn to. This is a great place to work. I like the positive vibe. But when it comes to personal time, that's where we recharge or energize ourselves to stay in that high energy level. Otherwise, we're going to get drained and be burned out. And so personal time, to me, is really an, an element of two things. We are, first of all, not living to work. We're working to live. So live. I give you permission to go out there and pursue your hobbies, your interests, spend time with the people that matter to you most. Why? Because you're doing this to actually spend time with them. Nobody dies at, their, at the end of their life wishing they had worked hard harder or more. They, they regret the relationships that they didn't foster more, some of the things they didn't do. So let's go out there and do those things. But in addition to that, with personal time, the thing I would also add is one of the things that is very important is recognizing that no success 
outside of the home can compensate for failure in the home. We need to recognize the importance of family, spend time with those people that matter most to us. And that personal time isn't just for us as individuals. It's also spending with those, uh, spending time with those that matter most in our lives. And so that's what I would highly recommend is just getting your priorities straight. And then everything else, I think, will just kind of fall into place. And and that's something that I found. Um, it was a tough learning lesson was that in my previous business, I was able to take on a lot. I was working a lot of hours. But when I finally realized the toll that it took on my family and that they were paying the price as well, that that's when I realized that I needed to do something different and started to move in this direction also. So I, I do appreciate you saying that because you can't repeat it enough. There's so often that people make sacrifices to serve their clients, but then they don't realize the toll that it takes on the people that are closest to them. Mm -hmm. So speaking about that for you, what do you do with your personal time or vacation? Anything interesting? Uh, my personal time, I do quite a bit of traveling. I love to travel, uh, particularly domestically, but my favorite let's say vacation, if I may, would be that of a cruise. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but cruising is very, very much a, a fond thing for me. It's where I see my wife relax the most that I ever see her relax. It's where I see myself enjoying more downtime because I am able to more completely disconnect. And so those things are big advantages to me. When, when you're out in the middle of the ocean and you don't pay for the internet package, you get disconnected. And so at that point, it's just a matter of reading a book, taking in the sights, enjoying the experience, uh, basically enjoying God's creation. And at that point, I'm very, very happy. So, uh, you know, to your point about sacrifice a moment ago, we all make a lot of sacrifices. Success comes on the back of, of sacrifice. We all give up something. And uh, we have to recognize for that sacrifice, we, we acknowledge it, but at the same time, we don't lament it. And so as we get older and hopefully more successful, we can start now getting back into the things that maybe we neglected over the years. And so it all comes with a sacrifice. I, I don't want anyone to feel as if they can't, they have to, there has to be a sacrifice. It is going to be hard. It will require you to uh, forget something, do something differently or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. And for me, if I can go on a cruise, I'll be happy. So at the end of March, 1st of April, I'm going on a cruise. And where are you going to, just out of curiosity? I think it is the Western Caribbean is what, oh, what I'm doing this next perfect. time. So I love going down there. It's easy. Whether I go out of Galveston or out of Florida or uh, New Orleans, doesn't matter. Once I get into the Gulf, I'm happy. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so I know that you are definitely someone who is raising the profession. You put so much information out there. You give content away all the time um, from free to free. And- Courses outside of accounting. Tell us a little bit about what's come out of it that's beyond just the accounting part of it. Oh, you know, I gl I'm glad you asked that. You know, um, there are a few little pet things that I ended up doing. I did a money management course that's for free. It's basically something that I got involved in because, and I don't know about everyone else in accounting, but they assume because you're dealing with accounting, you must know personal finance. And so clearly finance is a little different as a profession, but I taught a number of youth and young adults and such some personal finance uh, uh, classes. And from that developed a curriculum that I now offer for free. It's something that a lot of people appreciate. And so that's available. The other one that I have is a job placement uh, course that we offer for free. It's basically because I used to before this position back in the nineties, I was a headhunter. I was involved with recruiting and uh, had a lot to uh, offer as it relates to finding positions and going through that interviewing process to get hired. So I created a job placement course. It's called finding employment with confidence. It's a great curriculum. A lot of people go through that and in the end uh, find themselves more capable in getting the job they want and getting paid what they deserve. But here's the last one that's a kicker. My three children all got married. And when they married, I went and did basically conversations with them preceding the wedding. It was for me to give my blessing. I asked that they, I insisted that they actually meet with me four times before the, the wedding. Well, I had a number of friends and family that asked that I actually create that into a curriculum. And so I created a couples course. And so that also is available for free. So we've got things that are not accounting related, but they are, I think, very, very beneficial. And so people can take advantage of those and find them for free uh, on our website, universalaccounting.com in the free resource section. Roger, I hope that couples course is saving people's marriages. 
So. Uh, well, I have gotten great <laughs> feedback. So uh, more so with younger people who are newlyweds. And mm -hmm. yes, all those that I have uh, been involved in have been just astounded as to how much it helped them communicate. I was involved with a, a wedding that I was officiating, uh, asked to officiate. And when I was asked, I said, I will not do it unless you do this. And I meant it at the day of the wedding. If they had not completed the curriculum, I was not going to officiate. And fortunately for them, they had. Roger, always a wonderful conversation with you. Uh, some of the things that we covered is the three core services which elevate your role and position you as that strategic accountant, discovering the proven process that top accounting firms use to achieve remarkable growth and success. And to just you gave so many actionable insights that we can immediately put into start building your premier accounting firm. So thank you. Um, please share how they can connect with you and Universal Accounting Center. First and foremost, connect with me on LinkedIn. You can go there. I'd be happy to connect with you and we can message accordingly. Second is to go to universalaccounting.com. There you'll see the free resources that I was alluding to. Also, there's the podcast information for the podcast that I host. So you can get all the information at universalaccounting.com. And always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is universal. Thank you so much. This is Warren Fogelman with Business Success Solutions, showing accounting firm owners how to double their income, working half the time.